So today we're going to be talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now, these may seem like two very different processes, but they're actually super interrelated and really important to how energy cycles through Earth. Everything on Earth relates back to how we get the energy from the sun, take it into photosynthesis, and then have it undergo some more chemical transactions in cellular respiration. So, stick with us and we're going to learn about how they're related. It all goes back to what we call the circle of life. Now, so why are photosynthesis and cellular respiration so important anyway? Well, when we talk about photosynthesis, we're talking about how plants are getting energy from the sun and transforming it into glucose or sugar or food. So photosynthetic organisms are actually the base of the food chain on Earth. If you think about a food chain with plants at the bottom and then a herbivore after that and then a carnivore after that and then the secondary carnivore or a secondary consumer, it all goes up and up and up but the energy originally comes from the sun and the, that the plants are going to take and turn into glucose. Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass and the antelope eat the grass. And so we are all connected in the great circle of life. After the plants create it and other organisms consume it, we're going to have to undergo what's called cellular respiration. Now, all organisms need energy for lots of things. Think back when we were talking about cellular transport and how we had to get certain molecules into the cell or out of the cell using active transport and using ATP. Remember, ATP is the cellular money, but it's also energy. So we need energy to get those molecules in and out of the cell. We need it also for lots of different things. For movement, we need it for protection. We need it for processing food. We need it for getting rid of toxins and keeping our bodies healthy. We need it for maintaining homeostasis. Okay, so let's talk about the two processes side by side. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration really interact with each other because one produces the things that the other needs. So it's kind of like a cycle. So photosynthesis first. Now photosynthesis is going to take place in plants. Also some bacteria and some protists like green algae are going to undergo it as well. Now remember, photosynthesis is going to take place in the chloroplasts which contain chlorophyll which are used to harness the energy from the sun. Now. When that happens, they're going to use the sun's energy along with carbon dioxide and water to create our glucose and a little bit of oxygen too. So that's our reaction. Think about us. When we breathe, what do we need? Got it? Okay. There's more. We're talking about cellular respiration now. Now, all eukaryotic organisms, so that means us and everything else with a nucleus, is also going to have a mitochondrion, or many mitochondria, and that's where cellular respiration takes place. So inside the mitochondria, we're going to take in oxygen, we're going to take in glucose, we're going to process it, rearrange the molecules, and out comes CO2, out comes ATP energy, and out comes a little bit of water. Now you think about this, wait a minute, am I producing water when I undergo cellular respiration? And the answer is yes. So when you breathe out, you know you're breathing out carbon dioxide, but what about on a cold day? You go out, you can see your breath. Now that's the water vapor in, that is produced from cellular respiration that's leaving uh, your body. Now here we're just briefly looking at how photosynthesis and cellular respiration work off one another. So here we have photosynthesis going on in the chloroplast and cellular respiration going on in the mitochondria. Energy is coming in from the sun here, energy is going out as ATP here, and from photosynthesis it gives off the glucose and oxygen that it will need for cellular respiration, whereas that gives off the water and carbon dioxide that is needed in photosynthesis. Okay, so let's look at these equations side by side. In photosynthesis, light energy is coming in from the sun, and we're using carbon dioxide and water to create glucose, which is C6H12O6. Don't forget it. We also have oxygen as a byproduct. Now, in cellular respiration, we use that glucose and that oxygen to create carbon dioxide and water, as well as our ATP energy. Okay, so think about it. We're using that same carbon that the plants are producing in glucose to take in that we eat and then processing it in our cellular respiration, sending it back out into the atmosphere in carbon dioxide, 
and then the plants are going to take that in and use the same carbon dioxide when they undergo photosynthesis. And you see how the circle of life is continuing. So while we're talking about it, let's briefly look at the carbon cycle. Now, we'll go further into this when we get to our ecology unit, but right now let's just talk about how carbon can cycle through the earth and the environment. So remember, photosynthesis has sunlight going into plants to create energy. And so the plants take in carbon dioxide, or taking in carbon, from the atmosphere, and then they're creating glucose, so they're making organic carbon. And then some organisms are going to decay, so that carbon will go into the earth, and eventually other animals will consume the carbon in the plants, and then breathe out the same carbon again into the atmosphere. Plants can also undergo respiration too, so that carbon will be expelled into the atmosphere as well. These plants will die, these animals will die, that'll also go as dead organisms and waste products into the earth, into the ground. Uh, the roots can undergo respiration, oceans will take some of the carbon, uh, factory emissions, car emissions will expel carbon, and the same carbon element we will see throughout our entire earth cycle. You need to understand that balance and respect all the creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. Okay guys, so tomorrow we're going to be doing a lab with respiration and talking about what happens in a little bit further detail. So make sure you have some good notes in this video and I'll see you tomorrow.